Welcome to Let Us Farm. My name is Emily Fonwell Oge of Let Us Farm. So today we are going to be discussing about the implications of drug use on your catfish farm. Is it very good to use drugs for your treatment of your catfish or is it bad? What are the implications on both the fish and the person that consumes the fish? That's what we are going to be discussing. I will be right back to discuss this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now, if you were a poultry farmer before being a catfish farmer, you understand that there's something we call vaccination chart. These are the charts you use in taking treatment of your birds from day old, sometimes until sales, or sometimes until a certain time. But a catfish farming is a different ball game. We don't have vaccine chart. That's why many people, when they, t- they talk to me, they say, oh, we just bought juvenile. What drugs are we going to put them on? I try to explain, but some people somehow don't seem to believe it. I don't blame them. That's because of the knowledge they have from other animal husbandry and then to fish farming. Now, like you may know, most of the animal husbandry, you start from day old to like treat your your animals to avoid them having some communicable disease that they can catch while growing, especially when they are small. This is what is obtainable in most of the animal husbandry. But in catfish farming, it's not the same thing with animal husbandry. One of the major reasons is that catfish lives inside water. Unlike animal husbandry, the animals, they stay where you have open air, you come into people's contact. In catfish farming, it doesn't come into people's contact. So they live in water. And if you understand the composition of water, water is pure. In fact, as, as a, we have some fishes that they say they are never sick. Just like the white shark, it's never sick. That's one of the only animals on earth that is free from cancer. Now, why is it free from cancer? Do you think that it's free from cancer? It's because of the tissue of the animal. No. These things are deep water. And most deep water organisms, animals, are free from cancer. Simply because the deepest part of the water they stay or they dive into is free from most of these sicknesses and illnesses that go down the water. This is a small secret. So anything that lives down, 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 down the water is almost uh, almost uh, free from sicknesses and illness. Because the deeper they go, the neater and everywhere is. Now, what are the implications? What drugs do you need to start with your catfish farm? If you listen to what I said at the opening, you discover that there's no drug. Now, when you buy your fishes from fingerlings, from juvenile, from jumbo, post, whatever you want to buy, there is absolutely no need for you to have this impression of using drugs. And this is the reason why. When you apply drugs to fishes, you are reducing killing their immune system what is their immune system their immune system is that thing in them you know in a human being you have the white blood cell and you have the red blood cell your white blood cell actually is like the, your soldier the protector of you so when there is external attack when there is uh, sicknesses that come it fights it off now in catfish when you give them treatment you give them drugs you kill that this their immune system so any small thing Maybe even just a very small dirty water that is not supposed to mean anything, they fall sick. Because the drugs you are giving them has already weakened their immune system. So their system can no longer fight these external attacks. If after listening to this video, you are still not convinced about the use of drug, then it's going to be difficult for you to actually push very further in the business. The reason why I'm saying it is that most people that actually look for drugs are people that their pawns are small. If you are using big pawns, you have to even vision it. You have to even reason it. You have to even imagine it. Imagine if your pawn is a 50 by 100 pawn and somebody is telling you to use drugs. If you understand the the cash implication on the drugs we are talking about, you discover that, oh, there could be an alternative. Now, the alternative I'm saying is not a pro- it's not like it has not been proven or just like maybe I'm making it up. No. Most big farmers, most big farms do not buy drugs for catfish. That's why many people like catfish farming. You don't worry yourself about drugs. But what you must worry yourself about 
is your stocking density. Like I said, if you want to know your stocking density, simply send me the length, the width, and the depth of the pond that you want to use. Send it to my WhatsApp number 081 three five three four eight nine zero nine i will tell you how many you are supposed to stock remember this service is free so don't think that maybe i'm saying it so that you will come to me i really don't need that because sometimes it becomes too much but at the end of the day it is what it is so send it to me i'll be able to guide you and tell you how many exactly you have to stock now you don't need drugs like i was saying the main thing that you need is to get your stocking density right if you don't overstock your fishes and you change water when as when and as at regular you are supposed to do it your chances of your uh, fishes becoming sick is 99 percent free they won't be sick this is just the plain truth because it is the more that they are inside the pond that makes that leads to sicknesses when they are too much in the pond, the waste is what leads to the sicknesses. Remember, this pond we are talking about is water that they live in. Now, they release their waste inside this water and they still drink this water and breathe in this water. So, if you can actually reduce the amount of contamination in the water that they eat and drink with, it means that you have reduced the amount of contamination that enters into their system, meaning that you have been able to solve the problem of them being sick. These things is not these things are no no there are no big studies but the problem is that most of us you want to make it when you cannot make it yes you want to make it when you cannot make it imagine a pond that is supposed to be uh, 50 you are putting 250 that means you want to make it in the pond that is supposed to be 50 and you are putting 250 meaning you cannot make it so that's the problem. If you can be able to understand these principles, you don't have any problem. Now, if you don't use drugs on your fishes, what happens is that if there were some certain times that there are errors that could have brought sicknesses to them, they become free from those sicknesses because their body can be able to fight this antibody and keep them healthy. And this reduces the amount of problem that you will be facing. So that's why I said, do not use drugs for your fishes. What you do is maintain a healthy, clean environment for them. They will be able to stay alive without falling sick. It, that's why some people will now say, oh no, we want to use salt. The implication of using salt is that the, anytime you use salt, excess salt, you automatically start killing your fishes. And let me tell you, sometimes the fishes may not die. But they start responding very slow to even eating, very slow to other things. And you think you are doing your fishes well. You are not. Sometimes I see people every time saying, oh, they want to go and do salt bath, salt bath, salt bath. What are you batting? You are doing what salt bath are we talking about? Forget about this issue of salt bath. Do not kill your fishes. Do not make your fishes stagnant. Do not make them to stop growing simply because you want to do what is in your mind so i'm saying no if i don't do it my fishes will die who told you your fishes will not die what will make your fishes die is if you are not neat if you are lazy to do things in if you are lazy to do things in the in cartridge business that means you want your fishes to die so avoid giving your fishes drugs Drugs should be the last thing you should ever think about when you have done everything and no one is working. When I say when you have done everything and no one is working, be sure to be doing everything right and no one is working. Because I remember I was talking to somebody about overstocking. He said, no, I never ever overstock. Everything you have been saying in your video, I have been doing it. What is the size of your pond? He said, I know what I'm saying. He sent me a video. The fishes were one side. He said, you see, there is so much space in the pond. Can you see that? What is the size of your pond? When I started to explain to him that the fishes you see one side, are they not packed together? They are packed together because that's where the water flew to, flowed to. When they were, when water was going out. So the, the force of the water going to that side will make them go to one side and leave one side for you free. When I gave him the measurement, he discovered that he stocked three times the number in the pond. 
then the talk not the come down but the question is what is the impact of mistake of destruction have you done at that particular point in time that is the problem so you don't need to give your your your, your fishes drugs one implication of giving your fishes drugs is that you you reduce and kill their immune system two you risk the chances of having stunted growth three most of the drugs you think are working may not be working and four your fishes will be dying for a condition that is present in the pond but because you are not fighting that condition you are fighting shadow they keep dying of what benefit is that to you I may have given you a long talk today, but then again, if you cannot understand anything I have said, or you have some doubts and you want me to clear these doubts, or you want me to explain further, you can ask me questions on the comment section and I will do well to respond to you. To you. And if you are having any crisis in your farm whatsoever, simply do a video and send to 081 and when I watch this video, I'll be able to help you free of charge. Until I come your way next time, my name is Emily Fonwell Oge of Let Us Farm. Keep farming. It's a rough life.